right, welcome back for another episode of Dollar Bin Digging. This is the video and article that I do for comicbookinvest.com where I talk about those books that are still probably tucked away in those cheap boxes, those dollar bins, those discount boxes, whether they be like half off cover where you're digging at half price books, yard sales, flea markets, at your LCS, wherever you're finding your cheap comics. These are some of the books I think you might still be able to find based off of some of the recent news, rumors, announcements, things going on in the actual comics and on television shows, etc. Hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure that you like, you subscribe, you hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. And if you haven't tried Whatnot before, now's your chance to sign up with the app. First-time users get a free $15 on me to spend on whatever you like with whomever you like. No strings attached. First-time users, 15 bucks, so you can get something cool. Not only will you help the channel, you can get yourself something uh, something nice. Uh, with that all said, if you want to see this week's books, all you got to do is hang on for a few seconds, and I'll be right back. So let's start off this week and see what we got in the news to talk about. Uh, I got a couple of news items that I found kind of interesting that can relate to some comics that we can go look for. First one being Memorial Day weekend, box office. Very disappointing. Very disappointing for both Furiosa as well as Garfield. It's just one of those things. I know I wanted to go to the movies. I wanted to see Furiosa, but I didn't have time because I had plans. And I'm sure plenty of people had uh, plans this past Memorial Day. So that led to a less than stellar box office for these two movies. But even with that said, well, there's not a lot to talk about Furio. So sure, I got to point out that Mad Max book if they got that one special. But we've already talked about that before. So let's talk about Garfield, right? Why not? Let's talk about Garfield. With that said, let's go back to that May 2012 series and uh, look at uh, you know some Kaboom books. So Garfield, number one, out of Kaboom. You know, Jim Davis. You could find this book out there if you go digging. You can find it in those kids' boxes. And like I said, these are the types of things you can find in those boxes that nobody likes to look at. They've got like some random animaniacs. We got some, maybe some uh, Walt Disney books, maybe some DuckTales. Who knows? But look for the Garfields in there. You can see, look, six seventy five one sold for, uh, you know, uh, was it this week? Six seventy five. So it's not that expensive. You can find copies available online for four bucks, six bucks, eight dollars. So it's not like if you do find it in a box, you're gonna go and get rich. But if you're interested in Garfield, this is your chance. But apart from just the number one, which you know, obviously, I mean, it is. It is what it is. It's the first. You know, it's it's an issue one. So people want the number ones. But with that, while you're digging, look for some of those uh, incentives too, because who knows? Like, chops might just stick these things all together because they don't know the difference. So you don't know. This could just be buried in a box. So just keep an eye out for it and know that it's out there uh, just to know that it exists. And I'm talking about the 1 in 15 for that same issue one, which you can see we got a lot of superhero references there with the hands. Uh, so kind of fun. And it's a 1 in 15, so it's not a super high ratio incentive. So there's a good chance you can find one of these out there, if you're lucky. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. saying there's a chance. Uh, nobody bought one of these recently. And uh, when I went shopping for one, I found one, and they wanted $103. Actually, $104. Uh, so, yeah. Guess it's not cheap if you can find one of these. So it's the digging. Like I said, you never know. You never know what you're going to find in those boxes because it, it does say limited edition on the front. But other than that, it doesn't say like 1 to 15 ratio or anything like that. It is just it's the B cover. Technically, it's the second cover. Uh, so it could get mixed, you know, mixed in with the rest. You never know. Uh, with that, that's not all. There is an even higher ratio incentive. And I know what you're going to say. You're not going to find these high ratio incentives in dollar boxes. That's not true. Because I found these before in 50 cent boxes. Granted, it was a while ago, but I did find them. And what I'm talking about are these. These are like the design covers uh, for these books. Uh, so this is issue one. It's a one in 30. I actually didn't find this particular one. 
I didn't find the number one. I was looking for it and digging in the box. I didn't find number one, but I did find a couple of the others, which we're going to get to in a second. And that's, again, why I put it in here. It's because I actually did find these in those uh, discount boxes. Just because people just get collections and they don't know. They don't care. They just see Garfield books and they just throw them in the box and mix it in with all the other 90s like nonsense and whatnot. So you never know. Well, here we go. Issue one. It's a one in 30. Copy sold somewhat recently. For only five dollars online, May eleventh. It's only a couple weeks ago. So, despite the fact that this is a one in thirty incentive on a Garfield book, where you know the print run's not going to be that high, it's still that was a buy it now. It just got listed and bought for five bucks. Meanwhile, you want to see what's available? Well, the listed copies are listed for seventy five and one hundred and five dollars. So somebody saw that listing, probably popped off real quick and bought it right away. Just scooped it up real quick because, well, maybe they're keeping an eye out for it. Point being, that's a big discrepancy between what actually sold and what people are asking. But the point being, you never know what you're going to find out there. Just get to digging and uh, see what you can find. Because as I mentioned, I did find this one, which is issue two. And I remember it was just a bright yellow cover and I saw Odie and I'm like, all right, well, I'll buy this for 50 cents. I still remember the box I got it out of. The guy who I bought it from mostly sold cards. It was at a flea market, not too far from me. He had like one box, one short box of comics. And he kept like restocking the short box of comics every once in a while. But mostly he sold sports cards. So you never know. You never know. Go digging. This is a one in 20 though. So it's not as high of an incentive ratio, but still a one in 20 for issue two. And they also did one in 20s for issue three and four as well. So uh, I believe I got two and three, and I might have even gotten four when I remember digging for these. And the regular ones weren't there. And it's not like there was a whole bunch of Garfield books. It's just these books were randomly in there. Like I said, you never know what you're going to find. But as examples, just to give you a sense of what these might go for online, we can look. You can see somebody bought a lot of all of these variants. And again, very cheap. It was only 20 bucks. So these aren't necessarily going to be expensive, but they do have the potential to be expensive when you look at the asking prices. So 45, 45, 85. Meanwhile, the cheap ones go quickly. Other copies, they may sit there for a while. I don't know. You may eventually connect with some collector who really wants their Garfield books and be able to flip your book and get 50 bucks out of it. I don't know. It doesn't hurt to try, especially if you find it in a cheap box. That's all I'm saying. And what else I'm saying is... Another book you can keep an eye out for as part of this run is uh, this issue here, uh, just issue five. Granted, there's a few more, and there's a few more with these Super Pets or this Pet Force, but this Pet Force, I think this is the first one I saw as part of this run, was on issue five, and, you yeah, know, this one does okay uh, for it just being a regular comic. With no, it's not an incentive. Uh, 20 bucks, thereabouts, one sold a couple weeks ago, and there's one listed right now, also looking for 18. It's at auction, so, yeah, who knows? it's an auction ending tomorrow. So we'll see if that one actually sells. It's just some fun stuff to go and look for. Again, comics can be fun. Yeah, you might be able to make a couple of bucks if you find these cheap enough, but at the same time, you might just be able to find yourself some fun comics uh, that are worth reading and just having in your collection. So with that said, oh, we will say that issue five does have an incentive. It does have a one in 10 incentive it's also pretty cool. It's got that Avengers uh, throwback there with the Pet Force cover. I think it's kind of cool. I would get this if I could, but when I looked, I actually, we might have to consider this one for Chasing Ghosts because I couldn't find any copies listed nor any sold. So uh, good luck. Good luck looking for your Garfield number five, one in 10 incentive. But it's kind of a fun cover, right? Anyway, uh, that was my piece for Garfield. Like I said, uh, it... Did better than I think expected at the box office coming in at number two, almost even surpassing Furiosa, which I thought was going to do a lot better. But eh, we'll see. I'm still going to go try to see it. I might actually try to go tomorrow, uh, just between me and you. Uh, I might take some time off and uh, leave work early and uh, go check out a movie. I don't know. But with that said, we're not done here. We do have uh, at least one more news story for you, which is Captain Planet. Yes, we apparently are still getting a Captain Planet movie. Uh, Glenn Powell says he's optimistic about this movie taking flight. That's Hangman from uh, Top Gun Maverick, if you do or do not recognize him. 
probably a decent choice to play Captain Planet, even though Captain Planet was never my uh, favorite superhero uh, growing up. I do remember the cartoon in the 90s. But even with that, I still can't get the SNL skit with Don Cheadle out of my head. So I see Captain Planet movie. Uh, this is all I see. I can only think of this. So... Thank you, Saturday Night Live, for ruining any chance of me probably enjoying a Captain Planet feature. Because, yeah, I don't know how well it would work either, but who knows? Looks like they still might be making it. And uh, either way, you can look for some Captain Planet comic books. Starting off with, obviously, issue one, going back to August of 1991. So the fantastic first issue, it looks like a real, just from the uh, animated show, you got it right there. Kind of fun. Kind of fun, right? Uh, you can get a couple bucks for it. Copy selling for uh, 6 to 10. Uh, issues 1 and 2 together. Best offer on $13. So not a ton, but you might dig it out of a box. Copies listed, though. 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Somebody else looking for $50 for some reason. All right, that's an outlier, but, you know, there's always outliers. But still, 10 to 15 is not bad for a Captain Planet 1 that you might find in a box. And uh, this is not a long series. I believe it only ran 12 issues. And uh, a few of the others are worth grabbing, too. So if you find any Captain Planet books for, uh, you know, just a dollar or a couple of bucks, you might want to consider them if they're in good condition. Because here we got issue four, which pretty fun. Fantastic four one homage, right? That's kind of cool. This one, five bucks, eight bucks. And then it's sold with issue one or a lot of four. That's issues one through four sold for almost 40 bucks. So still, 5 to 10 bucks ain't too bad. Uh, copies listed, though, we're looking for about 10 And then somebody else wants 44 You know, they're going fishing, but, you know, sometimes when you go fishing, you do hit. It just, it happens. Uh, another example of a book in the run you can look for is here, Issue 7. Uh, All Out Eco Action with Captain Planet. Uh, this one reminds me of the, you know, the X-Men, you know, the charging one. And, uh... And we've seen plenty of these types of covers. It also has like a little bit of a X Factor uh, Five kind of vibe, where you just have the you know heroes and villains, or whatever, just facing off against each other. We've seen it a lot, but this one, yeah, it does all right. Here we got copies sold for uh, ten bucks, thirteen bucks. One sold for fifty five dollars. But then there's none available, so uh, who knows where the market might be now? Uh, I don't know, just weird stuff, right? And then finally, the final issue, which, as I always mention with Last to Know on Hidden Gems, it's always good to grab those last issues, those final issues. So uh, issue 12, Captain Planet, is no exception. Uh, as you can see here, copy sold, well, 15 bucks, and then one sold with issue 11 for best offer on 11. Then when you look at the asking prices, well, people want 25 to 30. Uh, one person even wants 75 bucks. So maybe you do all right if you find issue 12. Of Captain Planet. Just saying. Weird stuff that you can go and dig out of a box and maybe make a couple dollars. If not, it could just give you a couple of smiles and maybe even a couple of laughs when you show your friends. Like, what did you buy? I bought Captain Planet comics. Who? Exactly. With that said, our last story, our last news story, uh, before we get into some of the comics. And this one kind of toes the line between the comics and news story, because this is the comic that came out last week, and I could have covered it on this show last week, but I already had a full agenda. So now we do have a new story related to last week's release, talking about an underrated Marvel hero returning to join Blood Hunt. And if you don't know who this picture of this person is, well, we're going to tell you, because it's Union Jack. And in Union Jack the Ripper, number one, tied in with Blood Hunt, this is a decent enough read. Uh, wasn't the groundbreaking brand new story we've never seen before, but still, it's kind of fun for a vampire story and uh, with survivors and they get bunkered up. It's a decent book. I'm looking forward to the next one just to read it. But while we're talking about Union Jack, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the first appearance of Joseph Chapman, the current version of the Union Jack character. Now, Way back in uh, Captain America, back in 1980, uh, issue 253, we did get introduced to not only uh, Chapman, who becomes uh, Captain Britain, but earlier, or also in this issue, you find the original Captain Britain, which was a much older gentleman now, because the World War II vet, he aged, Captain America didn't age, so uh, I believe it's his uncle. So I think uh, Chapman here is, a, is his nephew, if 
Um, no, I might be mistaken, but uh, that's how I kind of remember it. But Chapman here introducing himself to Cap as just the guy. He's just a guy. He's not yet uh, Union Jack. He's just, you know, the character in this story. Also dealing with vampires. You got, uh, is it Baron Blood, I think, also in these? I don't know. It's a fun little, fun little uh, couple issues, little story arc. But uh, this book, that's him. It's first period. Call it cameo. Call it whatever you want. Uh, sells for five to ten bucks. So again, it's not going to make you rich. But copies listed five to ten bucks. One's listed for as high as thirty dollars. So first Union Jack three. Oh, I guess it's the third version of the Union Jack. All I know it's the current one. So that's why I'm looking at this one. This is the current, current, you know, mantle holder of the Union Jack uh, uh, uniform and title. So. Uh, but if you don't want that, you can always get the issue right after. So this is 253. So 254 features Union Jack on the cover. But no, that is not Chapman. That is the uh, older version. Uh, they, they play like a little, you'll have to read the story to understand it. But yes, that is the older gentleman. That's why he looks so thin on the cover. So don't get sold a bill of goods that this is the first cover appearance of uh, Chapman as Union Jack because that ain't him. But with that, uh, and then like I said, Baron Blood, I did remember. Inside this issue, he does put on the uh, uniform after they take down uh, Baron Blood and becomes the next uh, Union Jack there. So this would probably be the one that you might want out of the two, but it's really up to you. I'd say get them both if you can, especially go digging. And uh, they're not going to cost you much. You saw the other one was 5 to 10 bucks. This one is even less. Look, copy sold for $1.31, $2, uh, best offer on 7 bucks. This got hot at one time, and this was like a $15 to $20 book. Uh, Based on, I can't remember which rumors were there were. I think maybe there were Union Jack rumors. I don't know. But uh, I know it did heat up at least once throughout the you know the past couple of years. Uh, that's why there's some copies listed for like 17 bucks. Meanwhile, five bucks or 10 bucks for a three issue run. So again, not going to make you rich, but fun stuff you can go and dig out. Also, inside the story of this uh, Union Jack the Ripper, we got introduced to this vampire character. That he was keeping under wraps and uh, locked into locked in his safe house, uh, basically trapped. And uh, the reason why is because this vampire is actually his buddy, this character Bulldog, who was actually introduced not all that long ago. So Bulldog apparently, I guess he got bitten earlier in the story somewhere. We didn't see it, so it happened prior to the events of this issue, and he's got him trapped as a vampire. So. Bulldog is being locked up in the basement. I guess is uh, I think Union Jack's trying to uh, find the uh, master, the one who turned him, to try to save him, to uh, turn him back. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Bulldog, however, first appeared in February's 2021's The Union, uh, issue three. Short-lived uh, Marvel title uh, dealing with some of those uh, UK uh, heroes. So here he is, busting in. That'd be Bulldog. Uh, just kicking his way in and uh, scrapping with our uh, Union Jack. Yeah, right there. Boom. So what does this book go for? As you might guess, not very much at all because nobody's bought one in a while. And if you wanted to buy one, even online, you can get it for $1.79, 2 bucks, or two fifty. This is just the very definition of a dollar bin book. But it's a dollar bin book with the first appearance in it if you want it. I mean, I know Bulldog's the most most famous character out there. We'll probably not see much of him going forward. But if you're kind of connected to this story, you're reading this Union Jack the Ripper, you want to get the first appearance of his buddy Bulldog, you can get it for next to nothing. So go out there digging. That's the point. Just trying to give you some fun books that you can go and find uh, when you're out there uh, hunting. And if you want to tie in more with stuff with the actual comics, and if you decide to actually read these funny books, I got some more stuff for you, too. Going to go over to DC now. Looking at The Flash. Most recent issue of The Flash. I got to catch up, personally, in reading uh, these Flash issues. I uh, haven't really gotten into Spurrier's run yet, but we're going to talk a little bit about Spurrier's run because that's what we're looking at with a lot of these characters here. Grant, this is issue nine. So new this week, issue nine. Right there on the cover in the background is this Inspector Pilgrim character. Don't really, like I said, not keeping up, so I don't know much about him. Uh, but there's a big reveal re related to the character, so you might want to uh, read the book. I don't want to spoil it completely for you. Maybe we'll look into it as a follow-up next week because it could be interesting. But uh, Inspector Pilgrim first appeared in 
well, issue one of the current run, which he only came out a few months ago. So it's issue nine. You're looking back to September 2023. And uh, with issue one, Dawn of DC with the Flash, uh, you know, he's right in here uh, mixed in. They don't really uh, give you much to go on, uh, but he's there working in the uh, these offices there with uh, Mr. Terrific. And it's a lot of dark, a lot of dark scenes in here. But uh, yeah, he was buried in there. So that would be our first Inspector Pilgrim. Yeah, right, right back in here if uh, if you can't make it out. And uh, also in this issue, we get... and No, oh, that's right, because I want to give you something else. There's another character that also shows up uh, for the first time. So we don't want to just limit it to just uh, Inspector Pilgrim. We're also getting this character here, which is a new baddie uh, for the series and for the Flash. Uh, this is a character called Uncoiled. So it's another speed force or still force user. Again, I got to read up to get all the details down. I'm just rehashing some of the notes and things I picked up while doing my research here. But uncoiled, new bad guy shows up also at the end of this first issue of The Flash. So you're getting kind of a two for two for one here with two first appearances, which is why. Uh, and they both uh, you know, are in the... Uh, the current issue of the flash that's what i was showing you before the current issue of the flash showed up this character showing up because this is the panel from uh flash one with the first appearance uh right here so with that how much does this bad boy go for i know what you're thinking flash number one it's the number one should be expensive now nah, you know it's not it's like cover price or less look copy sold for 379 uh this has got a 499 cover by the way available copies Five bucks, two dollars and sixty-seven cents. Five bucks. It's cover price or less. So once again, you could probably find it discounted somewhere. I know a lot of people made comments. It's like you can't find dollar bin books anymore or dollar bin boxes. Uh, that's true in a lot of places. Like a lot of places don't do the dollar bins anymore because of the cost of comics these days. They're five bucks, so it's costing the LCS at least like two fifty to like two dollars and eighty cents per issue. So for them to sell it for a dollar is a deep loss you know what i mean so that's why we see fewer and fewer dollar boxes but when i'm talking about dollar bin digging we're also talking about those half price cover boxes those two dollar boxes because i know those are out there too depending on your different shop stores what they might do or again places like half price books and uh books a million and whatnot that still might i don't have any of these second and charles i don't have any of those near me i see other people get pickups of books listed for very very cheap money so go look, you know, places like that. But The Flash, again, cover price or less, if you're interested. Also, in this issue nine, we're not done yet. We still got a little bit more. Granted, this is a tiny cameo, if we can even call this a cameo. Way back in here, yeah, all these Flashes, these other Speed Force users, right there in the white suit, that's Godspeed. You remember Godspeed? Godspeed was the big bad from the rebirth time frame of the flash. So yeah, just a point to bring this up and we could talk about another character. Yeah. So he might come back, might do something else here. I don't know, but in flash rebirth, number one, back in June of 2016, that's when we got our first look at Godspeed, which is right here. Granted, there isn't much more in this story. It is a very quick cameo, if you will, but he's in there. And that's the point. This book, Used to be expensive. This used to be like 15 bucks. When I say expensive, I mean, yeah, it was like 15 bucks for a while. So like out of the rebirth books, for whatever reason, like Flash was one of those first, the early, uh, the early risers, one of the first ones to like be doing well in the aftermarket. But now $5.83 one sold for, which is actually kind of impressive for a $2.99 cover, uh, you know, almost 10 years later. I can't believe it's almost 10 years later from rebirth. That's, that's kind of crazy to think about. But copies listed for basically cover price, three bucks, three bucks, eight bucks for the pair of the A and B. Not not expensive. So if you watch your first Godspeed, and you can see plenty of people list it as a uh, you know first you know Godspeed and uh, the character who becomes Godspeed. He's more in the story than as anyway. You could read it for yourself to get get all the details. Point being, there's another book for you can you can dig and find out there for uh, you know for very cheap money. I think I got something else for you, too. Yep. We got a dog. Right here. Why are we going to talk about this dog? Well, it's Nightwing's dog. 
It's Nightwing's dog. It's been Nightwing's dog for a little bit now. So this dog has been in several issues of Nightwing. And this dog is Haley the dog. Hallie the dog? Uh, I don't know how you would pronounce it. But either way, Nightwing's dog first appeared in this popular issue, which is issue 78, which uh, was part of, you know, I, when was this the start of Taylor's run? I can't remember this is the start, but I do remember this. This is a great cover, by the way. And this book was pretty popular for a stretch and still kind of is. So if you can find issue 78 for cheap, I would say you get it because, uh, like I said, it's done well over time. In here, we get a, a kind of upsetting, like seeing how Haley is being treated here. It's like John Wick. Uh, you, you give me some of that revenge vibes here, but Haley makes it. So that's the good thing. Uh, we know the dog makes it because, you know, Nightwing takes it under his wing and keeps him or her. Next thing. What does this go for? Well, copies are sold for 15 bucks. Best offer on 15 bucks. So like I said, this one does all right already. Uh, asking price, 15 to 20 bucks. So, yeah. Yeah, something to consider. Man, not just for the dog. Like I said, the people like this issue uh, on its own as well. You know, outside of this, we do have uh, some specials that both Marvel and DC released uh, in preparation or ahead of Pride Month, which will start in June. So with that, Marvel did a special wedding issue that kind of went back under their voices um, imprint, I guess, or sub subprint, whatever you want to call it. But a very special edition of Marvel Voices, Pride issue, Mystique and Destiny's Never Before Seen Wedding. A couple of like stories in here. It's a little bit like an anthology around this wedding. It's a decent enough little thing. It's kind of expensive. Uh, I think it's like 10 bucks or something like that. It's got a pretty decent cover uh, price on it, but it's got a few stories in it. But also inside of this, we've got some characters that we can talk about. So inside of this, we do get uh, a little bit of these, uh, the new, I don't want to say the new, well, I guess they were the new mutants for a little while, but uh, not the Sam Guthrie version. But we got Bling and uh, another Anoli, which we'll get to in a second. I think Pixie's right back there too. But Bling right here uh, in the front is who we're going to talk about first. So Bling showing up. She's got the little story there with Wolverine and it's something about a wedding gift. And then they end up in the Savage Land, some hijinks ensue, et cetera. This is an oddball X-Men character. One of those books that I forget. I think there were rumors or something happened at one point. Caused this book to spike. And now it is completely forgotten about. But Bling, with an exclamation point, mind you. Uh, her first appearance was in X-Men 171. This was the Jim Lee X-Men. You know that one that ran uh, from there. So that Jim Lee number one up through 171 is what we got here. Uh, Salvador La Roca doing the uh, La Roca. Uh, doing the art but here uh kind of in the background not a whole lot of a uh, hullabaloo around it but there is bling and a couple of panels so there you go once again this book had a little bit of uh something behind it once like meaning a 10 to 15 dollar type of a spike now it, it's a best offer on a dollar six bucks one at 99 cents with one bid at auction so it, it's not a pricey book but it's a first appearance. You can go and dig. So you never know. You never know. We still don't know what mutants we're going to get. We don't know uh, where they might go in X-Men 97. Granted, this issue is from 2005. So this would be a bit of a stretch for the X-Men 97 cartoon. But as far as other X-Men related materials, we don't know what they're going to do. This could just be background filler uh, mutant type stuff. But copies listed for uh, three, four, six bucks. Nothing, nothing major. Again, cheap book, book you could find, uh, and it's first appearance. And as I mentioned, also in this, uh, well, I'm showing you the same panel, but in this storyline, we also, uh, oh, it's more to the left. Uh, and that's the back of them, but it's Anoli. I guess it's, that's how you say it, Anoli. A little lizard dude. A little lizard dude mutant. Yeah, he, he he's in this too. They, they were on a squad together at, at one time. But in 2003... This version of the New Mutants with uh, all these pretty awesome Middleton covers. And I know I've talked about these plenty of times before. But now we're talking about them for different reasons. Uh, not just for the Middleton cover, but for inside the book, we do get our first little lizard dude here. Uh, Anoli, or Anol. I don't know. He's not even named yet in this uh, in this issue. But there he is, showing up 
and he pops back up again later, etc. This book does okay. Three bucks, two bucks, if two to three bucks is okay by you. Uh, and then asking price as well, closer to 10 bucks because I think in the Middleton cover. So, yeah, who knows? Uh, one more book, just to kind of wrap us up. As I mentioned, that was Marvel's uh, release this week for Pride Month. DC Pride 2024 also came out. Also is an anthology book. Also has a pretty hefty cover price, but has some fun little uh, little short stories inside it. Again, it's an anthology after all. But inside this, let's see some other characters we could talk about. We could start off here with this story that uh, dealt with some more Speed Force stuff. We got Jay Garrick. And we've got uh, Circuit Breaker. So Circuit Breaker is right here. I believe Circuit Breaker is a trans character. And uh, in this story, tying in with another book we already talked about, Circuit Breaker faces off against Uncoiled. So boom, look at that. Connectivity running through these books uh, this week. So right there, that's uh, the Uncoiled. It's again, Speed Force, Still Force. There's connections there. But uh here we go again with uh, this character, Circuit Breaker. I remember it made news at the time uh, when it was released, I believe, because of the uh, you know, the nature of being a trans character. But uh, in February of 2023, as part of DC Universe Lazarus Planet, Dark Fate number one, this was the uh, first appearance. Uh, it's a pretty decent like storyline in here. It's like a, almost like a little subsection of this book, also like an anthology. Uh, focus in on the introduction of Circuit Breaker. So uh, I just showed you the end of it, but it, it's, a, it's like a whole story in here. So there's no doubt that it's not just a cameo or anything. This would be the first appearance of uh, Circuit Breaker here. So, and again, it's not an expensive book. So it's one of those things, if you want to dig it out for cheap, go for it because it's cover price or less. It's a $4.99 cover. Copies have sold for three and four bucks. So for less than cover. Asking prices are looking for $4 to $5.50. So it is what it is. Uh, cover price or less. And uh, also inside this uh, huge anthology, there was a Poison Ivy story here where we also um, get to see her her friend here. Uh, what's her name? Janet. Janet Mitchell. Uh, Poison Ivy met her. She's like HR. She, I don't really know a lot about the character, uh, to be fair, but. She's a friend of Poison Ivy's. She's been hanging around a while, been in a lot of issues uh, over the last couple of years, I guess. So she's become like a little supporting character in the Poison Ivy kind of corner of the universe. And she was first introduced back in November of 2021 in this Gotham City Villains Anniversary Giant. So this, whatever, this big book. That's a pretty cool cover. I, I do like this cover here. Um, and inside, we are again introduced to our, uh, our friend Janet. So... Uh, Again, it's kind of comes off a little timid, like, like a timid uh, HR rep, and then it just kind of blossoms under uh, blossoms uh, under Poison Ivy's uh, you know friendship. But uh, this is the book again. You can find out there. Cover price or less is what we're talking about here. Copy sold online. Well, one sold for almost ten bucks. So there's that, and four bucks, six bucks. Uh, copies listed. Well, they're only looking for three dollars to four dollars. Uh, so yeah, it is what it is. Just the odd selection of stuff that I thought you might find interesting while you're out there digging this week. Uh, some books you can get some first appearances for and get them for cheap. Uh, based off, again, some of the recent news and the rumors and comic book stuff and characters that have been showing up in the stuff that we are reading. So with that said, uh, I just want to thank you all for stopping by and checking this out. Uh, I'll be back again with more of these next week, obviously. And uh, make sure you check out all the other stuff here on the channel as well. And uh, with that, I'll see you all soon with some more content. All right, later.